In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use pads in worship by running them in Ableton Live. My name is Jake with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative church leaders. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can receive all of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Pads are a fantastic way to fill out the sound of your worship band. So I wanted to just show you how I'm using pads in Ableton Live. You don't have to use Ableton Live to run pads. There's a lot of other simpler ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. And I just wanted to give you kind of a behind the scenes look of my Ableton Live set list and and if you are using Ableton Live, you'll be able to probably pull away a couple tips and tricks for utilizing pads in your Ableton Live set. So here is my complete Ableton Live set list. I just used this set list last Sunday. We did Glorious Day, I Know, Holy Spirit, Oh Come to the Altar, and Not Afraid. We have five songs in our set list. I set up all my Ableton Live sets in arrangement view. I really highly prefer that way of setting up setlist in Ableton Live. It just makes sense for me to lay out all my tracks and all my cues for Pro Presenter and lighting chronologically over time. And the same goes for my pads. The first thing I want to show you though is the basics of just file management. How I keep track of my pads in Ableton and how I'm dragging and dropping them into my set list. So if I pull up my Ableton browser here on the left, I have one of my saved places here called pads. It's my folder of pads on my external hard drive. And in the folder, I have the MP3 files for the Churchfront uh, warm pads. And these pads are actually available for download. The link is in the description of this video. My friend Boomer Bait made these pads and they have a just amazing warm sound that uh, can really be applied in any worship context. Over 500 worship leaders are using these pads. You should probably try them too. So I have the pads in my browser here on the left. And let's say if I wanted to add pads um, under the song, I know. So this song is in the key of E. Uh, so what I do is I just find the pad file that's in the key of E, click it, drag it down here uh, onto my pads track right here. And there we go. I'll expand this so you can see the waveforms. Um, but there's my pads right there. So I'll solo the pads, you can hear them. I don't really use pads like this though, like I don't really run pads under all of my songs because I already use backing tracks and multi-track stems to really fill in the sound behind the songs themselves. So that's why I want to talk about how I do use pads because if, if I'm using multi-track stems all the time, I'm not just necessarily always running them underneath uh, our band, um, even though sometimes that does help fill in the sound, especially if you're not using tracks. I I'm actually using for a couple other strategic purposes and it's really just two main strategic purposes. The first purpose is to create super smooth transitions in between songs. Pads are amazing, especially if songs, adjacent songs are in the same key. If song one is in key of A and song two is in key of A, you can just put pads in the key of A uh, underneath both of them. And I'll show you an example of utilizing pads for transitions uh, right now. So if you look here in my set list, I have the songs, Oh Come to the Altar, and Not Afraid, uh, we did those both in the key of A. And sometimes I'm, as a worship leader, I'm trying to strategically plan to like what keys are gonna transition the best. I don't always put keys in the same song one after another, uh, but when I can, when they're pretty close and it works vocally, I do it. So uh, right here at the end of O Come to the Altar, I'll turn on the MP3 track so you can hear the actual singing part too. So when O Come to the Altar kind of fades down, I have the pads fading in. So the pads are kind of underlaying that last little verse that you have of O Come to the Altar right here. And then watch how it Three, four, keeps five, a strong six. transition right here. Intro two, three, four. And then Not Afraid begins. I'm gonna show that again. I'm gonna take out the MP3 file. It's gonna sound a little bit smoother because the MP3 files kind of like suddenly stop. So listen to that again. End three, 
four, five, six. And then our cues count us Intro, off. Two, three, four. So it just creates that seamless transition. So that's like my first primary way I use pads in Ableton Live to create those smooth transitions. The next purpose I have for using pads in Ableton Live is to just provide that supporting sound uh, at the end of a song, especially our third song in our set list. That's usually when we have a little bit more spontaneity. That's where I'll say a prayer after the end of that song. It usually transitions well into the next portion of our worship service. So I love having the pads underneath me there because I can uh, not worry about playing my guitar. I can just focus on praying. Um, and then if we want, we can even, uh, we, we, I keep the pads looping in the background here. Um, in arrangement view in Ableton Live. So we could actually reprise a chorus or one of the parts of that last song that we just sang, if, if I feel led to do that. So here's what that looks like. Uh, so the third song in the set list here, we did Holy Spirit. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And what happens is I actually faded this one in. It looks like I actually faded the pads in pretty early. I'm not actually sure why I did that, um, but Let's say I, ideally what I probably would do is fade the pads in towards the very end of Holy Spirit. End. And when we get to the end of that song, then I have the freedom uh, to just pray, speak to the congregation, or because we also have the click going, we could also reprise uh, the chorus of the song. And I have this neat little uh, repeating cue right here that, that allows us to loop this so I can keep praying or singing however long we want. We don't do it that long usually, but this is what that looks like. So it hits that cue and it loops back to right here. So that's the second purpose, is just to have the pads playing in the background, uh, allows for that spontaneity, supports prayers, and, and just those times when I want to pastorally engage the congregation. And then there's one more little trick I use running pads in Ableton Live that's really crucial to the way I use them. Um, and if you're running them in Ableton 2, uh, you're probably going to want to do this yourself. So one issue that I ran into when I first put pads into Ableton Live is that when I press stop, the pads would automatically just suddenly stop. So for example, if they're playing, it just stops. And, and that doesn't seem like a big thing, but that can be jarring. Uh, you, you, we want to figure out a way to, to fade out the pads during worship. And because I wanted the flexibility of these pads to be able to loop, especially during these moments at the, uh, the end of a song, I couldn't really program in uh, automation in a certain point because I don't know how long I was going to pray, if I was going to repeat a chorus at the end of a song. So I needed a way to be able to stop the pad sound any time I wanted to and have it still just fade out naturally. So here's how I figured that out. What I did is I just applied a really heavy reverb to my pads track. So what happens is when it stops playing the sound, when the playhead stops, the reverb allows the pads to kind of fade out. And that's what makes it able to just fade out at any given time when you stop the playhead and it sounds awesome. So what I did is I went into audio effects and I went under the uh, reverb folder here. And under reverb, I just did cathedral reverb because it's a really heavy, long uh, reverb. It has a long decay to it. That's the key to having a reverb that has a long decay. And then now when I play the song with the reverb, I press the stop button and it fades out. So that's a quick little hack you can use in Ableton Live. Just apply lots of reverb to your pads track to let it fade out whenever you stop the playhead. And one more quick note, make sure you adjust the reverb parameters down here. Reverb does tend to sometimes adjust the tone of the pads and the sound of the pads, so you don't want to too heavily uh, be adjusting those things because you want your pads to sound the way they're supposed to. So make sure you adjust the parameters down there if you feel like the EQ was off or maybe you need to adjust how dry or wet the reverb mix is. So that's how I use pads in Ableton Live every Sunday when I lead worship. I hope that was helpful for you guys considering using pads and also considering using pads in Ableton Live. Like I mentioned already, you can download the Churchfront pads for free. The link is in the description of this video. 
video. Hundreds of worship leaders from around the globe are already using these pads, so you should also give them a try yourself. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you share it with your other friends in ministry who could benefit from this information. And please don't forget to subscribe to the Church Run channel so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.